All right, so this video is to finish up confidence intervals. It's going to be the confidence interval for the proportion. You should have just watched the confidence interval for the mean and the background of confidence intervals, etc. That video was made for Math 220, so let me make just a couple of comments um, to make 307 a little bit more doable here at the end of the semester. We are only doing 95% confidence intervals. And when you have to set up the, you know, the formula, this would have been from the last video, right? And to look for that T value, you're going to use this much easier chart. The chart that was used in the video was for Math 220. It's a little more complicated. These are all 95% confidence intervals. That's the only thing I'm going to ask you. Degrees of freedom is N minus 1. Um, so you look it up that way. And again, that number is just when you have to show me the setup. You are going to go to your calculator, um, the T interval, and you'll never even have to put that number into the calculator. All right, so today, we'll put this formula up in a minute. This is the formula we're going to be using, but it has a Z value. So you're going to see when we do this lecture that I can already tell you what the Z value is going to be because we're only going to use 95% confidence intervals. Also down here was stuff from a few videos ago, the sampling distribution. Okay, so this is what I call like your cheat sheet for this stuff. Something else I wanted to show you, um, I've included this handout on Canvas. It's not part of the lecture notes for today. This is just something if it helps you. It just summarizes, so the sampling distributions, um, how do you know if it's X or X var, var versus proportion. Um, I remind you how X and X var go forwards and backwards. Proportion only goes forwards. I remind you about the normality assumptions. I kind of give you a real quick summary of how, you, how are you going to know the difference because those were what we talked about, the camps, right? We talked about that in one of the videos. Confidence intervals. This, again, kind of summarizes the last video you watched. And this summarizes today's video. So this has been loaded um, in the handouts in the module. So that might help you stay organized. All right. Now, part of the lecture notes today... Uh, we're going to work on three problems. So here are the three problems. Then we will um, do the lecture. So this is, okay, that pen's broke. Chapter 8.3, confidence interval for the population proportion. Remember proportion I think I probably used the example of how many ounces of coffee do you drink? That's measuring something. That's the mean. But if I ask you, do you drink coffee daily? Yes or no? 49% of 153 students drink coffee daily. We talked about that when we were doing the sampling distribution videos. So the same way back then that you decided, is this an XX bar, or is this a PP hat, is the exact same way you're going to decide for the confidence intervals. Since on the last video we already talked about the background of confidence intervals and what it means, all I really have to do is give you the formula. And here was um, last video, you know, we said estimate plus or minus Z times the margin of error. So if we're estimating, remember population proportion is P. If we don't know what the true population proportion is, we're going to use the sample proportion as an estimate. Now hopefully that looks a little familiar if you've been doing handout 21.5 um, exercises. I'm going to... Where's my cheat sheet? I wanted to point that out. When you were doing sampling distributions, remember how you had to calculate that ugly standard deviation formula? Well, that formula used P in it, right? Because when we're doing sampling distributions, we assume we know what P is. Well, I can't put a P here because I don't know what P is. 
So of course I just used the P hat in there. Now, since we are only doing 95% confidence intervals in Math 307, I can go ahead and tell you right now the Z value is going to be 1.96. So every single time you're going to put that in. When we go to our calculator in a minute, we are going to find 1 prop Z int. It kind of cuts it off because it didn't have enough... Uh, Spaces, I guess, but the int stands for interval, of course. All right, the best way to do with this is just to start into a problem. If you'll pause me, I do want you to read that whole problem. It's really long, right? So I want you to pause me and read it, then we'll summarize it. Okay, so this problem... It's very dated, right? It's from 1998. I always leave it on here so I can just briefly talk about um, the history. I don't know when y'all were little if you remembered going to Cracker Barrel or Applebee's and having to ask for a non-smoking section if you lived in Virginia. Virginia was one of the last states to kind of catch on to secondhand smoke and banning smoking in restaurants, things like that. The idea that maybe smoke and secondhand smoke wasn't good for you, really started, of course, on the West Coast. So this was sort of starting to recognize secondhand smoke. It might sound silly, but they did a lot of studies on bartenders because there is the idea in America that you should be able to have a job and have safety on the job. You know, you can't just say to the bartenders, oh, well, go find another job. That's not the way it works in America. They should be able to work and be safe. But when smoking was allowed in bars, a bartender was exposed to secondhand smoke, you know, every hour of their shift. So, a lot of words here. Let's see. 21 of 39 sick bartenders got better after the ban. I'm just going to kind of summarize it like that's takes too long to say all the respiratory problems, right? But that's the info that they've given me. Um, the rest of it is just trying them trying to say we did good statistics. Yes, we had a lot of sick bartenders, and we did take a sample from them. So we're never going to use that 400 in there. And then they say do a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion who got better after the ban. Remember, this is the sample. So the sample proportion is 21 over 39. That's an awkward fraction. I'm going to stick that in my calculator. Oh, okay, it's 0.5385, so almost 54%, just so that way I kind of know what I'm working with, right? We're going to use the formula I put on the board, and that's on your cheat sheet, to show the setup. Remember, we're using a Z of 1.96. Half the time I kind of scribble that because I know I'm not actually going to calculate it out. I'm about to go to my calculator and use the shortcut. All right. So you're going to the beginning, the same spot on your calculator as the last video. You're going to go to stat. You're going to move over to test, stat test. Then you're going to scroll on down. Do not stop at Z interval. That is not it. You want one prop Z int. Hit enter. Okay, so I have an older calculator, although the new calculators probably work almost the same. It's asked, it doesn't ask me for much. It asks me for the X, N, and the C level, right? And then there's calculate. Since this problem gave me the information in fraction form, that makes going to the calculator super easy. X is 21, N is 39. My C level is 95. Now, to calculate the P hat for showing the setup, I had to do an extra step. But when they tell it to you in fraction form, it makes the calculator entry super easy. Hit calculate. Well, let me type my stuff in. We get 0 0.382, 0 0.6949. I want four decimal places. Same thing as the beginning of the course when we're representing proportions, numbers less than one, relative frequencies, probabilities, all of this stuff. Four decimal places, right? 
All right, this textbook problem, as fancy and as long as it was, that answered it. They don't follow up with a question. I'm always going to follow up with a question. So let's add a question to this problem. Here is a question. Is there evidence a majority of sick bartenders got better? Now, I find a lot of people overthink the word majority. Majority means greater than 0.5. It has nothing to do with 0.51 because there's a whole lot of numbers between 50 and 51%, right? So majority means greater than 0.5. Remember how we talked about in the last video, the entire confidence interval has to do whatever it's asking you, right? Is that entire thing greater than 0.5? No. The entire CI is not greater than 0.5. That is a complete answer for this one. So not too bad, right? You can pause me if you're not ready, but we're going to go on to number two. So again, pause me. I want you to read number two, particularly the top part, and then you can just skim A, B, and C. All right, so another dated problem, right, from 1998. But the idea, gosh, right now, it's even more massively so. The idea that often teachers need some extra resources or help with technology in the classroom, in the middle of COVID now, that's all teachers have been doing, right? Learning new technology. And the idea of that all-inclusive classroom, different lesson plans for all the different levels of ability of students in the classroom. Those are two still very real topics, even today, not just 1998. I'm gonna shorten the stuff up um, let's see, we did have 4,000 teachers, just so I keep with the lecture notes that I loaded. Part B says 21% needed help integrating students with various disabilities. And then Part A was talking about technology. 19.99% needed help with technology. So these, they gave it to you in percent, right? So getting that P hat to show the setup is super quick. 0.21 plus or minus, remember you always have to put it in decimal form. We're always doing 95% confidence intervals and it says that in part A and B, right? So here's the setup, kinda seems like busy work. I make you do this just in case you ever lost a graphing calculator, you would still be able to calculate confidence intervals if someone gave you like a $10 calculator. Maybe I'll try to separate this a little bit. Let's go ahead and set this one up. Do not round that to 20%. I purposely have made a 0.1999 and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, there's our setups. Now on this one, do not just listen to me. Don't get foggy brain on me right now. This problem is more difficult to put into the calculator. So make sure you have your calculator in front of you and you are practicing as I go through it. Go find your one prop Z end. And remember when you get there, it's gonna ask you X, N and the C level. Well, the N is easy, right? 4,000. C level's easy, 95. But it's X. The TI-83 never wants you to tell it P hat. It wants to know how many. Well, we have to figure out what is 21% of 4,000. 0.21 times 4,000. You don't have to leave the screen. You can type it right there on your screen. When you hit enter, once you hit the enter, right? It should say 840, which is correct. Now hit calculate. And you should get that. This one is even trickier on the calculator. 
go back to your one prop z end. Again, the N and the C level are super easy. But the X, okay, I want, I want you literally to start typing this stuff because I'm saving you guys an error that many of you get if you don't practice with me. Do 0.1999 times 4,000 and hit enter. But notice what it says. It says 799.6. If you try to leave that there and hit calculate, you are going to get a dimension error. The TI-83 is programmed where you have to have an integer in the X. See, we had 840 here, so that wasn't a problem. This is a problem. So you have to take your arrow, go back up, round it properly. 799.6 rounds to 800. So you're going to over-type that 799.6 and make it 800. Now you can hit Calculate. And you should get that. So we've kind of pretty much done A and B. Part C is an extremely long way to basically ask this question. So I'm going to paraphrase what they're asking you for in Part C. I'm going to erase this, so pause me if you're not ready. Well, I did not want to erase my confidence in it, but let me write that back up. And this one, the p hat was 0.21, the p hat here. So what part C is really asking you? They're like, oh, we noticed that a higher proportion of teachers needed help integrating students with disabilities than technology. Does that hold for all teachers? Because remember, these numbers are only for 4,000 teachers. There's more than 4,000 teachers. These numbers, the confidence intervals, are for the population of teachers, the true proportion. These are sample proportions. So they're saying, hey, basically, we notice this is bigger than this. Is that hold true for the population of teachers? It's part C. No. The confidence intervals overlap. Okay, and I think we did that with the intro of a political poll on the last video. These confidence intervals overlap, and just to remind you what I mean, you could kind of take this one. I always like to see things vertically, something like that, right, and see how they're overlapping, even if they overlap in the tiniest. You absolutely do not want to say more than that, because then you can end up saying something wrong. If you start talking about you know, the 0.2226 being bigger than the 0.2124, you have said something wrong. So this is the clear, precise um, answer. Explanation is the word I'm looking for. All right, let's do one more problem. I just totally made it up. Number three. Why don't you pause me, see if you can do number three start to finish. Show the setup, go to your calculator, and then answer the question, and then come back. And that way you can kind of see the little parts that you're missing, or maybe you're getting it all right. All right, so number three. I will survey the next 52 kids. I find that 34.6% have a hamster. I want a 95% 95 confidence interval for the true proportion of kids that have a hamster. So there's my P hat. We're doing 95%, so our Z is always 1.96. I have 52 kids. You're going to go to your TI-83. The 52 is the end, but the X. So this just made you practice it one more time because this is the most common mistake I see 
in all my classes on all my tests for proportion confidence interval problems. Getting that x. You've got to go 0.346 times 52. And when you do that, let's see what you're going to get but not leave. You're going to get 17.992, but you can't leave that there. You now have to go back, arrow back up, round that properly to 18. Then hit calculate. Okay. And I asked a question. Is there evidence more than a quarter? So more than 0.25? Make sure you're not looking at that number. You never answer interpretive questions looking at your sample because we, a confidence interval, is making a statement on the population. So no, the entire CI is not greater than 0.25, okay? I'll make up another question just really quick out loud. It's not on the sheet. Um, is there, I'll use the same language, based on the CI, is there evidence more than 20% have a hamster at home? Yes, the entire CI is greater than 0.2, if I had asked 20%, right? But I had asked originally 25%. Or if I said, is there evidence that less than half have a hamster at home? Yes, the entire thing is less than 0.5, okay? Um, just in case I haven't written it anywhere else, at this point you should be able to do all of handout 22, but newer, because you should have already done a lot of it, would be that number 5 through 7. One more just quick comment, because I do not remember if I included this in any other video and it just bears repeating. Proportion confidence intervals, uh, we had talked about in the other video, all the time. Those are the political polls and, you know, how happy you are about something that's happening in America. We see that all the time on television. Confidence intervals for the mean, like last video, not this one, that one I don't see very often in real life, except for, and that's why I put this in your lecture notes, except for this article. It was in my local newspaper in Stanton. Um, and it was comparing the middle class for Waynesboro, Stanton, and Gust County to the middle class for America. There's a whole issue on defined middle class anyway. I'm not going to get into a long spiel on that. But if you just kind of look at where I put my pen brackets, they're talking about the nation's middle class. Then they start talking about um, where I live, Stanton, Augusta County, Waynesboro, the middle 60% of households earned between 19,576 and 79,617. Okay, that is actually a confidence interval. So they come back and talk about it right here. For the income levels defining the middle class, the margins of error are plus or minus about 2,000 on the low end and 2,800 on the low, on the high end. So you could go back to these numbers and actually calculate the confidence interval for the low end and the confidence interval for the high end. First time ever I've seen them actually talk about margin of error, plus and minus for measurement data, just in your regular small town newspaper. So that was kind of exciting for me to find. All right. That is it. Um, so we are done with new material prepping you for the exam, which of course is cumulative. Um, so we will talk to you soon.